Welcome, welcome very much to Conversations with one of my favorite people in all the world, certainly here at MNN and in New York City, and that's Pamela Timmons. We had done a program where we got cut off short a little while ago, so we want to catch up with everything, and there's a lot going on. Pamela, yeah, she's is. an artist, and she's also a filmmaker, and she's also a member of the team here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And right. Pamela, so good to talk yeah, to you here. Yeah, great to see you again. Finally, we can get the whole program done, yeah, which is very good. Yeah. Okay, let's go over a little bit what we went over before. I know we got a lot of Women's Days coming up. Pete Seeger has passed, which that's is right. so sad and all yeah. that. But share again your own little background. You're an artist, yeah, and you've been an artist right. in an artistic family. Go yeah. over that a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, you, you're a major, you're a painter as well as filmmaker. Yes, but all, all my life, yeah. my mother was an artist. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she inspired me to draw and paint. Uh -huh. Write poetry. Poetry as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And Have you put uh, it so together? all my life I've been drawing painting. Have you put the poetry visual? together as a, pu a publication or anything um, like that? No. Uh, no. I mean, okay. it's really hard to publish yeah. poetry. But right. It's yeah, self-expression. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've published a little bit, but, you know, I'm not a recognized poet. You think poet. the sensibilities of the poet and the artist combine somewhere, somewhere? Oh, there yes, seem to be definitely. a great affinity between them. Yeah. The artistic yeah, temperament. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. well as philosophy. Yeah, right. And yeah. those things then also go together pretty well. Yes. C.P. Snow, we were talking about, he had the, uh, the difference between art and, and science. And it mm -hmm. does a big difference. The, the artistic part of it has a whole lot to contribute to human society uh, beyond what it's been able to do against the political classes <laughs> that run in the world of the mundane. Yeah, well, it's way beyond the political. Yeah, yeah. right. It, yeah, I agree with it you. It lasts for generations. And I've seen your paintings. For you go all the way. Thousands of years. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Cro Magnon Cave guys were pretty good, weren't they? Or gals. <laughs> they you know. were. Yeah, I, they really were. Yeah, yeah right. Sense of volume yeah, and yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> and that. Uh, and I've also seen a lot, of, uh, quite a bit of your work, and it ranges over a wide thing from. Uh, expressionist to uh, you know figurative and everything like yes. that and That's you're you're a really good painter thank you yeah no yeah, I'm really I've impressed with that we, we've seen them at your place and everything yes and yeah. you're still painting and everything or uh, on occasion usually I'm um, videotaping yeah or you know editing and producing right. DVDs and when when did you pick up on the filmmaking you the, I would presume the painting and so forth preceded the filmmaking? It or did. Oh, where yeah, did you pick yeah. up on it? How did you come to it? And then we could talk about it uh, in terms of what you're actually doing and have done. Mm. Yeah. I've always loved storytelling yeah. and also movement. So in movement. my art, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. in my art, I've always wanted a sense of movement. Yeah. Uh, Vincent van Gogh inspired me. He did. Yes. The Impressionists, and they were all about movement and yeah. observing the land and the seasons. Have I told you that story about him, Vincent? Vincent Van Gogh? No, yeah. I haven't heard your. No, Van well, I, I, let me say it because it's also maybe relevant and everything. They had a thing in the news, New York Times, about 20 years ago, an mm -hmm. article, and it was about the person who was then by birth certificate, not by legend or anything, mm -hmm. uh, the oldest person in the world, and it was a woman. Hmm. And she was living in Arles, France, where Van Gogh did the sunflowers or whatnot. Yeah. And she said in the thing, it was translated uh, from the French into, you know, lit English, uh, innocent English. And she said, yep, I'm 123 years old. She was 123 years old. And she what? said, yep, <laughs> and I gave up smoking cigarettes two years ago for my health. <laughs> and then she further, <laughs> so, so she further said, um, uh, she further said, yeah, I knew Vincent, the Divine One, oh the Divine my. One who, who was down there in our, because she was in our, she knew him on the spot, you know, and anyway, she knew him, and she said, yeah, Amazing. I knew Vincent, the Divine One, I'm here to tell you, he was a real prick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the poets sometimes aren't the, got the nicest <laughs> personality. There was one other w a wrinkle to that thing. Some banker in know. Paris made a deal with her. She had a good gig, a good real estate apartment on the plaza in Arles, and uh, she made a deal with him, so many thousand marks uh, or, or francs a month, mm -hmm. that he would get first grabs when she died. 
Mm. She outlived him 30 years and made out like a bandit. <laughs> anyway, that's a little thing. Well, that, that that's story my Van I can Gogh believe. story. Yeah. And Van Gogh was People never... People tell a lot of stories. Yeah. And Van Gogh's not here to speak for himself. No, but she But knew. I think his artwork speaks for himself. Absolutely, and but And that it didn't is outstanding. Although, during his time, like many artists, yeah. he was totally overlooked because he was ahead of his day. Okay, that's an interesting yeah. theo. Only, I think, sold over one of them, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure if that even happened. Well, and he because was the people that buy art are told by art advisors what to buy. That's right. And yeah. it's worse now than ever. And that's a metaphor. <laughs> if Van Gogh was here, yeah. they wouldn't be buying his work well, unless that's he was Somebody in. said, I think it was uh, <laughs> Joyce or, said, uh, or somebody who said, the artists are the antenna of the race. They're ahead of, the arts are ahead of the yes. time. And then the keepers of the Typically. canon... In the, yeah. in the museums and comparable things at the time, could not recognize what he was doing because he was ahead of his time. And that's a right. theme that's a very important theme for the whole of the human uh, enterprise, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. There are people who are ahead of the time, futurists, you would call them, right. or seers. That's right. And they're yeah. not in positions of, of reifying the outdated institutions that are being presaged a change, a qualitative change, in the time ahead. Right. So the arts really I mean, are ahead, To be an artist is yeah. to have s vision. And sensibilities. Yeah. It's not about not. being a commercial artist, which is where you're selling a product for a corporation Why or a shop. Why does that distinction ha should be? I agree with you. Why should it's that be It's very limited. I mean, it, you're yeah. selling a product. Yeah. It's a very limited vision. A lot is done in the name of selling a product. A lot of art is done in selling a product, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, but it's just, it's a consumer product. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it's a uh, very different sensibility. Uh -huh. And I yeah, didn't, okay. I've never been a commercial artist, yeah. and I never aspired to be. Uh -huh. But when I went to art school, that's what they were attempting to train me as. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, that I dropped out of art school because, because of that. that. Yeah. yeah, well, I yeah. dropped out of giving grades in the university <laughs> for the same interest. Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe we're on the same page <laughs> in terms of what the major well, values I thought, are. Yeah. Maybe I wanted to be a teacher. Uh -huh. And when I went to Hunter and I was studying education, they came up with the concept of university without walls. We, okay. And okay. I don't know if you're familiar Reed with that. College or something? Or no, uh, the this internet. This was Hunter yeah. College. Hunter College, yeah, yeah. A university without walls. Yeah. And I said, well, that sounds good to me. Yeah. And it's, you know, right now we can have a uh, tremendous amount of education with mentors. You were speaking to that doctor just before yeah, Dr. about Sayat, mentorship. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think that's, you know, if you have a direction and you know which way you want to go, Mm -hmm. y you really just need to find a good mentor to encourage you and help you along the path. Perhaps so. I mean, that's yeah. what Pete Seeger was about. Yeah, Pete Seeger. Listen, you know? let me, I'll hold, well, who is it? Uh, Richard, if I hold it, is that good? Or whatever, whichever way you can come in. This is an early picture of uh, a youngish Pete Seeger who is a, an icon to us all. God, that's a beautiful picture. That would have been that back is. in Woody Guthrie days, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was back in 63 when he did that concert for uh, Carnegie, Car Carnegie Hall. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 They've got a whole write-up about him in here. And he was at Harvard studying, and then he met Woody Guthrie, yeah. and he decided to go on the road. Yeah, right. And that right. made all the difference. Okay, Because yeah. he became his own person. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking to do when I document people. I'm looking for people who have a life, their own story, not something that has been told that they're to live this life. You yeah. fit into this uh, formula. It's about having your own life. Yeah, you know? well. And that's why I was inspired oh, and then to I'll give you another picture. Yeah. Here. Maybe you can see this. this is, and it's sad to pass because the man was a giant. I love Pete. Uh, Caesar. Yes. Everyone did. Yes. But I, I think everyone of sensibility. But this is another thing. This Clearwater is something Nation. that Pete Seeger encouraged me to do, mm -hmm. uh, Clearwater Nation. And uh, he was an artist, an activist. That Clearwater Sloop yeah. is a... A floating classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been going on for generations. Mm -hmm. He influenced generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when I was a little girl, I was singing his songs, and uh, he inspired me the to. The Weavers, be, remember? Yes. The, the Weavers were so good, and the folk songs. That was part of the 
critique of the society large, were at large, and he was on the yes. side of the angels, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> right, I yes. agree with you on that. Yeah, He's yeah. there now, yeah. yeah. And his wife, Toshi, yeah. the two yes, of them, wonderful. just remarkable. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a great loss to our community. Absolutely. It was what, it, it, just a couple months ago, it seems, that he yeah. passed. Yeah. Right? I was yeah. really saddened by Last that. Last summer and then yeah. this winter. Yeah. He suddenly he, passed. He was in really good health. He was apparently even chopping wood the week before he passed. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, he, it's a loss, yeah, a loss. But it was certainly a humanity's gain over the long haul. And he'll uh, live. He'll live into the future. Mm, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I always thought of him as forever young, and he did that Bob Dylan tune. Yeah. Forever Young. Did he do yeah. it? I didn't know it. Yeah. And he just is a great example of, like yourself, well, you're always doing. You're always making things happen. Your well, action I don't know. I, don't, I wish to hell I could be more effective <laughs> with some of the politicians in that, or the political order or something. It doesn't seem to have a... You never but I know. think that's, a pro that's been a problem with a lot of the people who are against the legion of injustices that have been characteristic of the human society over the long haul. Spartacus mm -hmm. had a hard time of it. Jesus oh, had yeah. a hard time. <laughs> I know Van Gogh had a hard Always time. Always challenged. Always challenging. <laughs> and Pete had a hard time because you're mm -hmm. struggling against the established order, which is wanting to reify itself around these, these uh, largely, I was talking to some people outside here like that, and uh, the major, fo the major, uh, Explanation. The major goal, or the major thing that motivates human society, I would say, I may be wrong, and it sounds very bad and everything, but the major thing for good or ill, or for whatever reason, that motivates human activity in the world is money. Mm -hmm. It's sad to say. It should be things yeah. like love and empathy and that's all the important right. things, important yeah. values. But yeah. that's the major thing. Partly, for some people, it still is. No, I mean, but uh, if you add everything up, that's the major thing that motivates people's behavior. Well, that's... Because uh, it's survival. Well, it's not not truly. I mean, we all die, that no is, matter what. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, we haven't been able to get a solution It's actually to a that, different yeah. consciousness. Yeah. Uh, when you study the arts and if you meditate, if you're someone who has a philosophy, yeah. uh, your mind goes beyond just the material. And that's what the Eastern philosophies really brought to us. And you the think transcendentalists. So? Oh, yeah. You definitely. think so? The Eastern, like the Vedics? And yeah. That, you, think? You, have yeah. A, you have a feeling for that? Yes, I do. I've studied that. I've been studying Tai Chi Chan for oh. many years, is and it? I read the I Ching. Uh -huh. And okay. uh, the life is way beyond just the material. Uh, well, it's just it, our society is so consumer oriented you, that you don't think they're consumer oriented in India? And well, how can they how can they in such a thing where they have such a thing have such a thing as like the untouchable class? I mean, well, uh, that doesn't sound to me no, very but very non uh, I'm not talking spiritual. about uh, everyone. Oh, right? okay. I'm, ta I'm talking about certain people. Uh, yeah. I, our okay. minds have the ability to go beyond the material and also beyond the destructive and domineering factor that we're seeing so that's much That's a major of. statement. <laughs> that's a major thing. We have oh, the yeah. ability to do that well, by... Well, that's my statement. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm beyond yeah. that. You are. I uh. do not do my work to destroy and to make profit. Uh-huh. I do my uh. work to try to empower and enlighten people. Uh -huh. That's my... Cool. Well, they, the East is East and West is West, Mr. Kipling said, and you have the Vedic tradition. That's right. And you have particular faith in the Vedic tradition as opposed to the Western model well, in I, terms I of these better values that you can see being superseding the materialistic orientation <laughs> of the West. Is well, that your sense? I, I sense that the East is influencing the West right now because there's a real move to uh, yoga and Tai Chi. You think so? Oh yeah, there's many people studying that and practicing it. And it's okay. good for your health. Okay. I mean, you just had that doctor on about cancer. If yeah. you're practicing uh, something like that, uh, you're going to have a better immune system. It's very good for your health. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. state of mind also can be yes. better for your health. Yeah. Definitely. You're in definitely you don't good need to health, be on antidepressants. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm in very good health. I take no medications, and I'm not planning on taking any medications mm -hmm. because one can be 
um, you know, conscious of what we eat mm -hmm. and uh, what we drink. Do you think there how is? How we think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's, yeah. good. that's two different things, how we think and how we eat. Those are two different <laughs> things. Like, say, on the eat side, you know? Yeah. Uh, is, do you think there is something that the universe on the side of good and light that you seem to think is uh, characteristic a part of it at all? There's a certain diet that is in keeping with that or that encourages that? I, do yeah. you have a diet thing? Yes, uh, I do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And is it relevant, do you think, as much as doing uh, yoga and oh, so forth? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Um, when I was a teenager, I found myself craving sugar. And I, I love sugar. Yeah. And I actually had to stop myself. You did, because you yeah. think that is not good for consciousness, right? Uh, the well, sugar effect. It, it's, it isn't good for consciousness, and it certainly isn't good for our health and well-being. It's creating a lot of diabetes and other health problems. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. in our consciousness, I've noticed that uh, even children, when they want sugar and they can't have it, they will actually look the other way. They won't, they'll just turn you off. And that's, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't quite get They'll just children, turn you off. With children, uh, what, uh, what? children, when they want sugar, yeah. I mean, at a very young age, we start craving these things. And part of it is our, our bodies, um, are craving it. Yeah. It, it has to do with, you know... Uh, Maybe that's because it tastes good. Uh, n well, it's because I it's love so that. much Don't a part like of our diet. Yeah. Natural sugar tastes good, well, too. They, I was thinking of that the other day, talking with Maggie. You were good <laughs> friends with Maggie. You yeah. are my, my friend. And, you know, in the, in the primordial days and everything, there wasn't much... I just thought about it because there was a thing about sugar cane or something. There wasn't hardly anything sweet. I mean, there wasn't, uh, there were some honeybees. There was a little honey that yeah. you could get the sweet or something. But there but wasn't honey any. Honey and th fruit is sweet. Fruit, fruit, actually, yeah. fruit. There were some fruits, but I mean, that comes cultivated more or less. I mean, the fruit hangs pretty wild. It's pretty rare in the wild. But the sweet was not very available like it is now. You can have right. availability to anything. Oh, my goodness. It goodness. seems to be in the modern world, there's three <laughs> things that the people by and large like. They like sugar, salt, and fat. <laughs> and they've thought those things out. And yeah. salt was very important in the primordial world. Mm -hmm. Salt uh, was there. Yeah. And so well, the salt three is things good. Everything that people in moderation. Like, it seems to be everything that people like is not good for you, and everything that's good for you, <laughs> people don't seem to cotton to well, on the mass, not in the group of the some of the enlightened people who are onto a different course of action. I don't right. know. It's just a thought. I mean, I like the diet I have, and uh, it's in moderation. Oh, yeah. you're for moderation? Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, Van Gogh wasn't for moderation with the use of yellow and everything, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a well, note. no. The trouble is you're I too damned interesting, Pavel <laughs> Timmons, and this is too interesting. Anyway, we, let's get back, if we could, because we're in television here, right? Yeah. So you picked up on filmmaking with the motion and everything. Yes. When did you pick up? About how long ago? How did yeah. you get into that? And what do you think the prospects are for important educational activity going on in the film, in the realm of filmmaking? Oh, I, I think that we are having a kind of renaissance, okay. really. Uh -huh. I mean, I think if Van Gogh was alive today, he would be a filmmaker with all that movement that he put in his work. Okay. But um, uh -huh. a, as a child, oh, that's my, interesting. Yeah, uh -huh. my mother and I would make home movies, uh -huh. and we'd put stories to You them. did, actually, in your own life. You mean. Yeah, you yeah, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. and, but it was expensive, and yeah. it was Eight difficult millimeter? to edit. Yeah. Eight millimeter. Yeah. yeah. So I got a hold of a Super 8. I still have yeah. some of that. Uh -huh. But once it turned into digital video, and I realized that it could go worldwide on yeah. the internet, yeah, I was like, now I really have to. Everything's come on <laughs> gangbusters, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 And it, with those home movies, there would be home movies, you and the dog, or something like that? Or were yeah. you, you didn't do things with storylines? Yeah, and all. we even you did, did little storylines. Yeah, because really. my mother did. was a storyteller. Do you have any of yeah. that uh, archive? Yeah. Oh, no. No. Isn't that a shame? Yeah, well... Wouldn't you love to have some of those yeah. films? I did films like that back in the 50s with an 8mm, but I can't find it now. No, I, they, it's I, a it's, shame. It's I would love really to have them now. It's really great archival yeah. for yeah, you right. know, telling a story. Like yeah. uh, I'm doing a story okay, on Donna Coane. Okay. And she's the lead drummer of this group. Okay, let me show this. Yeah. Is, let me show this. Let's show these things okay. for, and in support of what... Voices here of... We come, here we come. 
Voices of Women Worldwide. Oh, we want to talk about it. It's coming up yes. immediately, isn't it? This is an internet TV program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are celebrating the International Day of Peace uh, every Wonder. year, uh -huh. as well as the International Day of Women, which is coming up March 8th. March 8th, that's just around the yeah. corner, okay. So if what you go it? on to... It's an internet thing? Yeah. If you go onto that website, yeah, you will be able to, or you can just do a Google search for... Now, Google search for what? What would you search Voices for? Voices of Women Worldwide. Voices of Women Worldwide will bring yeah. this up to you on Google, right? Yeah. And, and then, then she TV. is a drummer with this group, is that it? Uh, Spirit I'm, of, I'm a member and also, and then there's this also uh, Richard, Spirit of Thunder show. Heart. Uh, there, it's rising the spirit of thunder. That's a woman's drumming group yes. that we've had association with. They're great. Yeah, They're really yeah. good. And yeah. I have like a roll-in clip. We did a special program last year uh -huh. uh, for this coming month of Women's History Month. Okay, March. Good. Yeah, yeah. That, that's March eighth again. Yeah. So Where is it going to be? Do we know it, it'll, the noise, it'll be there at the site then, or if you get to it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they have a Facebook page, Spirit okay. of Thunderheart, and they will also be giving you a calendar as to, you know, when and where things are happening. Well, March 8th is next week or two weeks from now? In a couple two, weeks, yeah, couple we'll weeks, be yeah. celebrating. Okay, yeah. very good. And they're, they're, are they Iroquois? You and I have been involved yeah. with the thing about celebrating right. the Iroquois, that's two right. wampum thing and everything that's really had a... Major. They were part of that, the Turo Wampum Renewal Campaign. Maybe we could share just a little yeah. bit of that, because I know you've vested a lot in there. You, you have a, a presence upstate in Kingston and that, but there was yeah. a major thing about the Turo Wampum. Yes, Maybe the 400th share anniversary. 400th anniversary. Go ahead, yeah, share that. Yeah, of the Turo uh, Wampum. Spell out what it was which, or is and what's well, significance. It was the first trade treaty mm -hmm. between the natives and the Dutch. And the Iroquois. Yeah, yeah, the Iroquois uh -huh, nation. Yeah. And the um, founding fathers. Yeah. Particularly Benjamin Franklin. Franklin think, yeah. Yes. Benjamin Franklin said, hey, this is a good idea. Uh, George Washington actually had a wampum belt made and agreed on this two row wampum, which was about the river of life. We know it as the Hudson River. Yeah. And the idea was there would be peace, friendship, and equity uh -huh. along the Hudson River. Right. It was like a treaty. Yes. It, it is a treaty. And the Founding Fathers learned much of the democratic side of things yes. from the inspiration <laughs> that was held by the Iroquois who had set this up yeah. before the Founding Fathers yeah. got the idea. It would seem that might be the case. Well, I had no idea this. But uh, yeah. I'm learning about this, yeah, that right. the democracy was here, and they did share yeah. their uh, understanding. And so the Founding Fathers learned from the, uh, from the Iroquois rather than the Iroquois learning from the Founding Fathers. Yeah, well, there is an element of that in there. There is. Yeah. I, you know, I'm actually curious about how much our Founding Fathers were coming from the uh, democracy that they knew in Europe that probably was coming from... Uh, Aristotle and Plato. Well, that goes back to the classics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had been a Renaissance and yeah. all that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So coming out of that, and then the combination of that democracy mm -hmm. and the democracy that was here through the Iroquois nation mm -hmm. that really honored women, and that's one of the what? big different. They, they honored. The, they women? honored women. <laughs> they had clan <laughs> mothers. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> no, maybe so that not when true. my yeah. grandmother yeah. was here yeah. and she could not vote, if she yeah. wanted to vote, she'd be thrown in jail. Yeah, right. Their clan mothers were making decisions yeah. on, you know, executive that were, decisions. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. may be heading for that now. Do you think? So maybe? I find that so interesting. Well, it's yeah. all part of this movement for International uh, Day of Women. Mm -hmm. Mar March 8th, and mm. then also Women's History Month, now, okay. which is, is that March. Is, that, is March Women's History yeah. That's in my birthday March. Yeah. March. Okay. Yeah, my well, birthday month. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and you know who else? We also month? honor Harold Channel. I'll take the honor. Who for is whatever. an enlightened <laughs> being. <laughs> well, I know, but it, it's also uh, my birthday. I, it, was almost, respect. it was almost a uh, national holiday. I was laboring hard for that. I There was a real movement afoot to make my birthday 
a national holiday I like Martin that. King or something. And I was really uh, <laughs> lobbying hard for that when I was in Washington and Congress doing programs and stuff yes. like that. Because I wanted all the kiddies to be out of school on my birthday. <laughs> We'd skip down to the thing and have an ice cream cone or something. You know? But no, it's all, it, it, could it still happen. You know, well, I don't think so because they're pretty hard to come by and they have great influence on the economy and whatnot. But, um, but you know, it was, it's, it, that happens to be Albert Einstein's birthday. Oh, yeah. what day? March 14th. That's March Very 14th. Special. Just yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to celebrate this year. I'm not celebrating birthdays yeah. as much as I used to when I was eight. Of course. <laughs> of course. But I think it's a special day. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We'll but anyway, I didn't want to get Honor that, you but, as well. Yes. But uh, so anyway, so we're talking about the filmmaking. We'll get back to that. All right. Yeah. So you picked it up with serious earnesty, earnest, and uh, we'll right. be having your website uh, uh, accompanying the airing of the program and everything. And you've gotten, you've developed real skill. With well, thank do you, you think the skills of painting uh, translate in some way or another into the skills involved with mm -hmm. the filmmaking, or I what's think your so. what's the uh, the uh, alchemy there? Yeah, I think it is composition. Composition, that, okay. Yeah, over the years yeah. of developing composition uh -huh. and a way of seeing. A way of seeing. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. To see the light and shade. And all the very the colors in between. You mentioned how you like to get to motion. So motion yes. indicates movement, indicates uh, time. It could be put in time. Yes. And it's a number of movements, not just a still painting. Yes. So yes. all of those things. How do they and then relate it, uh, to, to then? Then you need story. Right. You need storytelling. That's right. Because you've developed a thing. The under under all of those things. How do they? fit together yeah. in an artistic uh, mind uh, mm -hmm. consciousness or sensibility. Yeah. yeah. Well, they do. Yeah. It's all self-expression. Mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, with uh, video, we have movement. Yes. And so we can move the story along. Yeah. You know, uh, my experimental films are just with music. So well, it really it becomes, out, yeah. Spell out a little bit. What, what experimental films? Yeah, I, we haven't spelled yeah. out your, the over. You know, yeah. how much have you done, and what have you done, and did you? How did you get? What was your first, and what was <laughs> what was experimental? What was the canon that made the others experimental? You know, how much have you? Could you spell out yeah. some of that? Well, uh, as a filmmaker, if you go onto YouTube, you can see some of my experimental films that have been in film festivals here in New York City, okay. like Urban Fantasy. Urban Fantasy is a film. How long yes. is it? I think it's eight minutes long. Eight minutes, okay. Yeah. Uh, color, black Soundtrack. and Soundtrack. No, so it's all in color. Right. Yeah. Abstract or all concrete? Uh, or some of it's abstract, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and then uh, City in Balance. City in Balance is another. And Tango Noir. Tango yeah. Noir. Yeah. Okay. Tango Those are three that you have that are experimental. Yes. Uh, do you have others up there that aren't experimental? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And could you give your website? Uh, you just do yeah. YouTube.com, Pamela you, Timmons. Yeah. Yeah. You oh. just do a search for Pamela Timmons on in YouTube. YouTube. In yeah. It'll come up. How many do you have? And up I on also YouTube? have a website. Huh? Uh, I have a whole page. I forget how many. Yeah. I've actually stopped putting them up. Um, but right now, with the Spirit of Thunderheart, uh -huh. I'm going. I'm putting together an experimental film uh -huh. of just landscapes okay. with the drumming. Yeah. And then the, we're also looking to pull together a storyline for children, oh, really? and possibly work with some animation. Oh, really? Have yeah. You, have you dabbled with that yet? Yeah. Or not? Is it interesting? I, I haven't. I'd probably work with an animator yeah. to make that happen. Uh -huh. But I, I would do the videography, uh -huh. and uh, we could produce something like that. I see. Yeah. Okay. That that that's very interesting. Uh, the animation is really taking off. I, you know, it's amazing what they can do with that now. Yeah. I don't know how the heck that works. I have no yeah. idea. I guess a lot of algorithms. Oh, I, I do. I actually saw one of the first uh, computerized animations at an animation festival back in 1980. Wow, that's way back. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was blowing everybody's mind. We were up in uh, Ottawa, Canada. Oh, you were up there? Did you live up there for yeah. a while or just visiting? Uh, yeah. I was visiting. Uh -huh. I actually went up there with some animators that were here in New York. Uh huh. 
So uh, I might learn how to do it, but yeah. right now I might just rely on someone who already knows. Or there might be collaborate. Pa I suppose they'll be coming up with algorithmic uh, algorithms that will make it possible for you to do that kind of thing. Oh, I'm sure it's easier than ever. I think things are getting easier, right? Yeah. But the yeah. same principles hold, the artistic principles in your mind in terms oh, of definitely. making, let's just say, not only a piece of work, but a really good piece of work, and then maybe even a memory, a memorable piece of work. That's that right. that sort of thing still holds in your mind, right? Yes. It's the sensibility of the person behind it, right? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's really it's great artistic expression. Do you it like is. setting up a thing like storytelling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think a painting can tell a story? Uh, they do. They they do. Mm -hmm. you, so you you yeah. carry that from the art the painting mm -hmm. artist. Yeah, uh, actually paintings yeah, and the drawings are and yeah. yeah yeah they're a universal language. Yeah. I mean really uh -huh. they're international when mm -hmm. you think about it. But when you they need no translation. It is what it you see. Yeah. Okay. But you do have to conjure it a as you, you opposed to having to. a storyline like. Sherlock Holmes or something, you know, yeah. but, you know, or all that, or storytelling, yeah. Right. And well, then, there's always been illustration of yeah. stories. Yeah. Right. But I if you study uh, any work of art, there's a story there. Uh, there are windows of opportunity to see other points of view and uh -huh. and stories. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that's really interesting. So. Uh, so you develop, and then you have a you you program here. You program yes. at M and N. You have a series. What do you call it? Yeah, now? it's called Clearwater Nation. Clearwater Nation. That yeah. would have something to do in the wake of Mr. Um, yeah. Seeger, I well, would presume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and ecology and everything that he stands for. That's a really good uh, ship to follow. It would seem to me. Or, yes. Uh, well, guy. he and Toshi encouraged me. I actually have his okay, signature so on oh. something that he. Oh, pan oh, your thing, a panoramic yes. direct. Let's hold this up. And let's hold it for a minute or so. This is a document she's very proud of, deservedly so. This yeah. is a thing. Come out a little bit, Richard, if you can, maybe. There, there that's good. Yeah. It's got, that's a Panorama Productions, Pete Seeger Beacon, New York. Yes, Talent and that's release his from signature. <laughs> that is Pete Seeger's signature. Box 431 Beacon, New York. <laughs> One two five oh eight. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's something you want to frame. Oh right? my goodness! Yeah, I, I was just thrilled that he, you know, was accepting and encouraging me. And to you've do done this. programming with yeah. him and everything, and, yeah. and it would go and relate to him. Who else in the Amer in the human? I actually have no. a clip here that if Richard would roll it in, I don't know. We Are we see? able to set that yeah. up? Is it cute? It's already set. Oh, yeah. well, if, we're if we've got a clip, then we can cue. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank this you. This is the uh, drummers. Yeah.
wonderful Spirit of Thunderheart right here in New York City at the m and Studios playing live. And tonight you have a performance in Greenwich Village? Yes, we do. Greenwich yeah. Village. Yeah. Seven? Yeah. This is a clip from the documentary film that I'm producing right now, and uh, there's more to come. Uh, the Spirit of Thunderheart is also producing a CD that will be released this spring. Their Facebook page will be announcing. of the world. Is this <laughs> us now? We're back. Yeah. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just talking about that. was really beautiful. That thing, uh, Amazing yes. Grace and Mohawk. I was just saying, yes. we did the program with Dr. Sat and everything, and among other things, uh, we were talking about zeitgeist and about, you know, educational use of video and so mm. forth. And there's a fellow, Pistoni, who's working with uh, the zeitgeist, Peter, Peter Joseph and all that, and it comes out right. fuller. And mm -hmm. he's got a thing where the store of human knowledge can be put into multimedia stories and so forth. Mm. The world's going multimedia yes. as opposed to print. Okay, and it's going, and that uh, he has it on his site that he has uh, where the the education is coming out and it's got a soundtrack, and that he's got it to where you can have it be English. Spanish, or you can right. algorithmically translate the languages of the world one to the other, <laughs> even down to where I understand it's just over the horizon, where yeah. you can talk and it will come out in the mind or earplug of the person with whom you're communicating in Swahili or German or Chinese or whatever, <laughs> and vice versa. Do you yes. think that would be a good thing to break the bridge or b build a bridge of language between the people of the world? Oh, definitely. It yeah. would be a good thing. Yeah. I think it's just that's what they the do era. at the United and Nations. Well, yeah. that's no, that's done by a human being. Yeah. No, but this still, would be algorithmically just yeah. going right on its own. 
No, I know this you is know. a technological advance, but yeah. uh, the United Nations has been doing this for But you they're know, translating decades. through an individual individually. Yeah, and it's about making a bridge to communicate, and we need to learn how to listen. But isn't it better to be able to communicate algorithmically? Just in terms of a program yeah. without any human being involved. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. I think we also need to learn how to listen. I find uh -huh. most people are mm -hmm. like talking at each other, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm someone who really enjoys listening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm more of an introvert anyway. You are. And really? as a documentary filmmaker, yeah, uh, I, I'm okay. not really an extrovert. This is really pushing my limits. Is it to, now? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'll try used to let to, up, you know. No, I mean, no, I'm used no. to being uh, behind the camera. Yeah, I see, right. You know, you in the studio quietly, editing. You, th you think that yeah. whole introvert and extrovert yeah. is way of seeing people and that? That's interesting, yeah. Well, I, I think that uh, introverts, introverts tend to listen more. Be more artistic, more. maybe? Maybe artistic? Mm -hmm. Where does maybe. the artistic sensibility reside on that vector? <laughs> Well, I think you have to be willing to be somewhat introverted because you spend a lot of time by yourself. Yeah. With yeah. creativity. In the studio. Like, yeah. 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 Right. So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and your ideas develop. Yeah, that's that's really interesting in and uh, of 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 itself. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And what I find so interesting about the Spirit of Thunderheart yeah, is that. It's a traditional drum that they're playing, yeah. and those are traditional songs from their native nation. Right. A and uh, then through listening to that, it's a very meditative sound. Uh, you, you do you meditate? That, you, yes. You, you do meditate? In, yes. Yeah. A and that meditation is in sync with our heartbeat. Okay. And also the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Of according Mother. to their way of is, is that that you do your meditation too? They have different yogic disciplines and things like Is it a particular one like Sri Aurobindo or something or yeah. inspired by somebody? Uh, well, those are disciplines. Satchidananda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, one can follow a guru. Yeah. Uh, but one can also, uh, the guru is really there to just bring you to yourself. The best okay. spiritual guide is just telling you to be yourself. Okay. It's not to be like me and put me up on a pedestal yeah, uh -huh. and, you know, bow mm. to me or yeah. give me your life. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. That's really a misunderstanding. Uh -huh. And yet a lot of them do that. It's a fine line. I mean, peop they're very charismatic people. Very chris uh, charismatic. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Charismatic. Yeah, very so charismatic. they have to be very careful not to allow people to, you know, actually yeah. worship them because... Yeah. That's really not what it's about. No. It's about learning to be yourself. What about the, all the dialectics? Is it East is what? Uh, st who was it? Um, who was a famous writer who said, uh, who wrote uh, Gunga Din and everything? Uh, he said, East uh. is East and West is West, and never the twain shall meet. <laughs> and uh, the but male I don't female division, agree. the East West. I, I think the it, they spectrum, are meeting. All the divisions and everything that exist in the human society, what do you make of that? How do we deal with it? The differences and with the implications, let's just say East-West, male-female, for a couple of rather smaller matters that have been part of the human experience. Well, I, I I'm think, making a joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's very real. I think that mm. we have to ha develop more compassion and empathy toward each other uh -huh. and have a willing to listen and to put ourselves in the other person's point of view. Okay. And that actually uh -huh. helps us develop our consciousness so that we're not so narrow and egocentric. Uh -huh. Do you think and it actually feels good. It's uh -huh. a better you think, feeling. Yeah, 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 definitely. Do you think the egotistic, uh, there's, uh, people are too egotistical, too focused on themselves? And well, it's a level of consciousness. Yeah. First, you're very, I mean, when you watch a child, it's all about, the baby getting their needs. But as you grow and mature, you're willing to give of yourself. Uh -huh. And as you continue to grow and mature, you know, that is a potential. Uh -huh. Unless we become, you know, stuck in our yeah. progress. And a lot yeah. of people do mm -hmm. through fear. There's a tremendous amount of fear. 
and misunderstanding. So what are your projects? So then we do Oakland? the blame game. Yeah, there's a and lot of that like, going It's on. your fault. I know. Isn't there a lot of that going on now? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much now. Do you think it's yeah. getting the, the, it's building to a crescendo? Oh or my what? goodness. You think we so? We need more diplomacy. Is it growing with time? Uh, the crescendo I, I of think blame that game? Our mass media is creating a, a real problem with dividing our country, our the mass media. Uh, yes. You're becoming part of the mass yeah. media. Well, this is you, independent like, media. This is well, this different. Is, and it could a distinction. be. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, mass media, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the corporate America. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. network. And uh, it creates a hysteria and anxiety that people feel like they have to take sides mm -hmm. and blame each other. Mm -hmm. you know? But if we could, uh, you know, understand that we're all on a planet that is circling, you know, what do we do? We go around the sun, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's what we Apparently to understand. people in Congress think that the sun, you know. Goes around uh, Washington us. Monument <laughs> or the White House. Yeah, right. Yeah, they That was do. the latest I yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all very recent. I guess what Galileo came up with well, so he did it with that. That, that long ago. <laughs> that required those people at that time to develop lenses that could be, and it was just a thing. Put it on a long thing and make a telescope so you could see. So it was the tele, the lens capability making, and then he could see the pathways of Jupiter, and he came up with this <laughs> outlandish idea that the United, the world wasn't the center of the whole universe, <laughs> and he was put in jail for that. <laughs> Right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, so. and, and uh, <laughs> so that's what happens to the... Uh, and excommunicated. I, so, I, I, I'm not we, sure that, I think, yeah, 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 <laughs> right, right. And made to recant because they had a vested interest in, and if you mess with the way people get a... Hieronymus Bosch, do you like Hieronymus Bosch? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you do. Fascinating. Hieronymus Bosch was about yeah. that time, and it, it <laughs> spelled, it showed in the paintings of Hieronymus Bosch how messed up people's <laughs> consciousness was oh by goodness. this introduction that we're not the center of the universe. I mean, whatever whatever creation stories they come up with, that was central Frightful. to their identity. Yeah, and if people, if you mess with the way people get their identity. You're right. really messing with psychological trouble and chaos and complaints. Yeah. yeah. And we're getting a lot of that frightful, now. Frightful, frightful. But yeah. see, we're the arts and culture. Yeah. My program is on the cultural channel yeah. for and okay. 67. Uh -huh. But through the arts and culture and philosophy, we can get beyond that fear-based, anxious mindset. You think so? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I didn't do the work I do, uh, I would have to probably take uh, Prozac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something worse. Take some pharmaceutical yeah, drug yeah. to keep calm. Uh -huh. it, it really it does bring me back to knowing who I am and a sense of well-being. Uh -huh. You know, and, and uh, my self-expression is to bring that out. Well, that is, if I may, I'm just going to guess here, like amateur psychologist, Dr. Phil or something, you know, <laughs> uh, is that that is a means by which you would get a sense of identity or, let's say, maybe extend a little bit, purpose. Right. Do you think it's important Definitely. to have a sense of purpose or can yes. you just go through like purposely? Very much so. Or yeah. some, it is important, yeah. right? So people yeah. need a sense of identity and purpose. Yeah. And when they mess things up, when they change things, and things are changing so rapidly now within right. our lifetime, are changing it so is. rapidly. People's are, like all of the products of the world now. Have you noticed they got um, the Science Channel? They got a little filler thing they show all the time. There's not much. 1998 channels of television programming <laughs> on Time Warner in Manhattan, right? Oh my. And there's only about uh, maybe a, a, a 50 channels that are worth paying any attention to. By a list, it's great. all selling this or that or whatever. Yeah. But uh, one is they got the Science Channel, they have, which uh, PBS is good, and Nova and that. Yeah. But uh, and, and and then is a unique thing, but uh, they've got is wonderful. the Science yeah, Channel, the and then uh, they got the uh, History Channel, and um, they they uh, they did a thing as filler on the Science Channel. They have they have actually good storytelling uh, that is educational. Yes, with good good uh, expert 
verification of the factual what's being done, good right. graphics and all that, and right. there's a great art form in that, yeah. art in that. Yeah. They'll present that. But they have for filler a thing on the Science Channel where they talk about um, uh, how things are made. Mm -hmm. They got it called How Things Are Made. And it used to be that the exponential increasing of information technology that led to Google and the Internet and all this right. was coming. But the use, but Hans Moravac and the people down at Carnegie Mellon and other things on robotics, that was just a thing that was sort of off on the side where you'd have a little thing walking around bringing you a cup of coffee or something and stumble and fall and all that. Robotics yeah. now are joining an exponential uh, linking to the information thing in terms of the actual making of things, mm -hmm. material, the material world. Yes. Everything being made now is being done by robotics and eliminating human participation in the production. Yes. That's a huge it thing is. that is challenging the means by, I'm a plumber, I'm a this, right. I'm a that, right. that gave identity to people, even materialistically. So the well, identity that have people plumbers. have, I know, we yeah. do, yeah, yeah, no, but what, what I'm saying, <laughs> in the, all right, when I was young, a thousand years ago, <laughs> I was very, I, you know, I was young, there, there, wow, there, there, we had a uh, middle class family in Michigan, that's where I was raised, and my dad was a lawyer, my mother was the best mother in the history of the world, and I guess a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. higher <laughs> class or something. But yes. anyway, they had, uh, in, in, in my mother, grand, my mother, grandmother, great grandmother, uh -huh. Henry Ford tinkered in their garage when he was about seven or eight years old. What? Before he went on to build the Ford factory. <laughs> oh my. And then the Ford factory came <laughs> along, turned out these new things called automobiles. Everything had been drawn by horses. Yes. I wouldn't want to be a horse. It must be. I, I, anyway, they, they did. And so, and then they've created roles for people where you stand on the line and turn nuts all day right. long. Saying that, that can't be anything other than some grim sort of no. thing that would drive you crazy yeah. or something. Well, They're doing away with all meditative. that. meditative. Yeah. They're doing away with all the routine things that had to be done in order to make things. Right. And so right. that's, I am a nut turner. <laughs> so that's your identity? Yeah, that's what I yeah mean. exactly. Now they were able to get I some money. I think that's a good thing. Well, they, yeah, yeah. To, to, to do that. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I mean, people should be able to do more in their lives than stand there and do the same task over and over again. Yeah, but let me so run that robots thing. in that sense are fine. The robotics are moving yeah. now so that the identities are being undercut, right. much less the means in which those people used to do that to get money. Right. So it's all the capital instruments are producing all the wealth, and right. the money distribution isn't coming. So you're going to have a problem where people aren't going to be able to have money to clear the market of what can be produced. <laughs> the identity well, of the system in place is being challenged by qualitative change, yeah. like Galileo. Well, it is being challenged. Yeah. But if we use our creative mind, mm -hmm. we can find jobs. We can make work for everyone. You think so? What about yeah. what about how we can make it so people don't have to work to the degree? Let me yeah. one more thing. I just had a recount with a, a guy I knew one time. I uh, did a program. Bran Branson, uh, G uh, Branson. He's right. in English, yeah. and we did a program with him when he was just launching uh, 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 Virgin uh, Virgin Re no Virgin Airlines. Right. Anyway, nice guy, entrepreneur, and everything. Oh yeah. Like that. Big time. And um, airlines. Right. There are studies that show that the airlines of the world, you got a lot of people moving around. They tore down Pennsylvania Station, that Beaux Arts building, mm. the Dolans and that, they did that, because the railroads were being superseded by automobiles and, and airplanes mm. in terms of travel. So that's the advance, right. see, gobbling up the old, anyway. Yeah, but the airlines of the world would be not only more efficient, more capable, safer, if there were no pilots at all in the in the cockpit, if it was all done by triple redundancy, would be far. They can demonstrate mm -hmm. they would be far safer than what is inherent in having human error contributing to the loss of life by airplane crashes. Mm. Now, how would you feel if you got in an airplane and there was nothing up there but a computer, <laughs> as opposed to having a silver-haired fifty-year-old man uh, <laughs> saying, "I'm your pilot," and everything? You, but that's a fact. And wow. that's a that's the thing. And do you understand? Yeah. Well, what's the implication? Would you rather have the triple redundancy thing with all the oh. demonstrations that it's much safer, or would you rather yeah. have the uh, pilot 
maybe uh, a woman pilot <laughs> up where there. That's well, a good question. And that's where does the role for human uh, participation yes. in the overall process? Well, those are good questions. Uh -huh. I mean, we have not flown that many jets to find out what is really happening with that. This is very new. I, I didn't even realize that. I they didn't were mean flying. to throw it. It just came yeah. to my head. I'm jets, sorry. Yeah. And one thing for sure, if I may, is that we have a time of qualitative kind of transformation. It's sort of comparable to what happened in Galileo's time, from geocentric right. to uh, heliocentric. We're going through that change, and it underscores uh, identity problems right. that have been identified by our artists throughout all the ages, and the artists are really important, and they're moving right. into video as a way of expressing all of this. And right. one of the finest ones who's moving into that, and I'm glad to say you're aboard, is working <laughs> with the new media, which is, um, which is uh, multimedia and uh, video. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the a lot of projects. Digital videos. Digital video is the on. future. Yeah. And that can become part of the educational pattern that can be getting out to the whole wide world. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So are you optimistic and pessimistic for the human prospect? Yeah. You've well, only got a couple I, of minutes left. <laughs> I'm optimistic. You are. It, it feels much better to be optimistic, and I'm positive. And I want to believe that we can you know, really transcend this time of fear and anxiety uh, into something that is very creative and uh, uh, sustains life. Sustains life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's just and a matter the of... the shoals yeah. of incredible destructive capability that's, that's right. part of the, the uh, technological yeah. status with weapons that are species lethal. That's right. Does that bother that's you right. at all? Uh, I think it's time to let go of war? the weapons, yes, and the <laughs> war. It's obsolete, you know. We, it, it's beyond our ability to comprehend uh, the damage that's been done and the tragedy, the yeah. trauma. Yeah. And so it's time to heal and transcend that. And we have the capability of doing that. We just in a unique capability, yes, liberating maybe do. everybody and the ecology that we haven't had out of history. We do. It's time yeah. to wake up. That's right. Let's do this. This is it. <laughs> You're our alarm clock, darling, with your art. Thank you very much. All right, She's uh, thank to be you, found Alan. on Channel 4 here doing her program. Thanks a lot for coming. Always good to talk to you. Yeah, See, good I'll give to speak with I'll you. I'll give the best to Maggie always. Yes, and the dog. Yes, yeah, definitely. And give my best to Inky, your dog. And thank, <laughs> thank you, you for viewing. Your pleasure at the perceptions of uh, Pamela Timmons, producer here at MNN, one of our uh, great members of the staff. Thanks for viewing, <laughs> and uh, we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Oh, thank wow. You. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm